Hey everyone, welcome back, Professor Hank here. So today we're gonna to look at the pointer based or the linked list based stack data structure. So remember the stack data structure is a last in first out data structure and we can implement it by using a modified linked list. And we're gonna look at algorithms for making this thing work. So the algorithms we're gonna look at are gonna be peak to examine the top value of the stack, push used to push a new item onto the stack, and we're gonna look at pop, which is used to remove an item from the top of the stack. Let's begin. Let's think about you know how we're going to modify a linked list to make this happen so with a standard linked list you've got some variable that's in charge of keeping track of the first node or the head node of the list right so it's often referred to as a head pointer you know if you're using c plus plus or a head reference if you're using java for example and you know that you've got an empty linked list if that head variable is set to null okay well with a stack Remember, you're only ever interacting with one end of the structure, one end of the list. So, you know, if you've got a stack of values, say eight, six, five, since this is a last in first out data structure, if you were to push four on top of the stack and then do a peak, you would be examining that four, you'd be getting that, that four, right? The push would go on top and you'd be looking at what was on top of the data structure now if you did a pop to remove a value from the data structure which value do you remove you don't remove the eight you don't remove the five you don't remove the six you remove the four it's last in first out so you, what that means is that you're always interacting with one edge of the stack with one end of it so we're always going to be interacting with essentially the head pointer and the head node that's it so there's, no gonna, there's not going to be any kind of append operation or any kind of traversal that's going to happen here. And because of the fact that there's no traversal, this is always going, all these algorithms are always going to be interacting or executing in constant time, big O of one, because no matter how many nodes there are in the list, you're only ever going to be performing a set number of operations. The number of operations that you perform doesn't grow based off of how many nodes are in the list. Okay, so since we're always going to be interacting with one end and we're talking about a stack, let's change our, uh, our nomenclature, our terminology just a little bit. Instead of referring to a head variable, a head pointer, or a head node, we'll talk about a top variable and a top node. So let's call this our top variable, our top pointer, our top reference. And we're going to initialize that to null, and that means that our stack is empty. Okay, now, if we want to peek, if we want to take a look at what's on top of the stack, then we're going to need to have that top variable in scope. We have to have access to it. So whether you create a standalone function in your programming language of choice, which passes this variable as an argument, or if you're using a class, right, then if you're writing a class, then you'd have to have uh, the top variable be a attribute of the class then you might have a peak method for that class now with this peak algorithm what do we have to do what are we doing what are we, what are we trying to do we want to see the top value in the stack right well if the stack is empty there's nothing to view so let's say that we define our nodes such that they've got a variable called i restoring the value and they've got a, a variable called next where we're keeping track of where the next node is within the list, okay? So pretty standard stuff. So if that's the case, then we want to take a look at the top node's i value. Now you can only do that if the list is not empty. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're gonna check our top pointer and make sure that it doesn't equal null and if it doesn't then we can return the contents of our top node our top node whose address is in the top variable and the value is inside of our i variable in our top node so in this scenario here where we have an empty stack what's going to happen let's trace through our algorithm and make sure that nothing explodes now, the very first thing that we see here is if the top does not equal null. 
Well, in this case, that's false because our top variable does equal null. So the algorithm terminates, it's done. Now, what about a non-empty stack? Now, non-empty stack, let's say that it's the top node's got five in it, and it can have as many nodes in that stack as you want. It doesn't matter because we're only ever interacting with the top node. Okay, and this is why this thing executes in big O of one, because there's no traversal of the data structure that's going on, the list that's going on. So let's take a look at our algorithm. If uh, T does not equal null, well, that's true, right? Because our top variable, our top pointer reference, if you will, is pointing to our top node. So since that's true, we can now return the I value that's inside of the node whose address is in T. So what would this algorithm return for us in this scenario? It would return five. So there's your peak algorithm. Now let's take a look at our push algorithm. Now our push algorithm is also going to be constant time because the set number of operations or the number of operations that's performed are going to be set. It doesn't matter how many nodes there are in the stack. You're going to perform the same number of operations no matter what. Okay, so in order for this algorithm to work, what do we have to have? We have to have our top pointer in scope and we're going to have to have a value that we are going to push onto the stack. So we'll call that V. Right, so what do we have to do? So two scenarios, we've got an empty stack and we've got a non-empty stack. So we've got two scenarios, two possibilities that we've got to deal with. So let's take a look at scenario one. What are we gonna do? Well, the first thing we have to do is we have to create a new node, right? So that new node would use dynamic memory allocation so we would have something like this new node, right? So then we would have to store that memory address of that new node somewhere. So we'll put it into a variable we'll call n. Now we'll have to assign to our variable i inside of our new node, we'll have to assign it the value that we want to store. So once we've done that, don't forget we have a next pointer. So what are we going to put inside of that next pointer? Well, what we're going to put is going to be the contents of our top pointer. And you'll see why when we trace through this code here in just a second. And then finally, what we have to do is we have to attach that node to our list. Okay, we have to actually put it onto the stack. So that's it. There's four steps to this algorithm. There's basically you know, there's one assignment operation here, one assignment operation here, one here, one here. So that's four operations. And then if you count the new as an operation, you've got five total operations, no matter how long the list is. Okay, so that is constant time, big O of five to be specific, but with big O notation, we can rewrite this as big O of one. It's constant time. So let's trace through this algorithm and make sure that it works. So let's say, that we wanted to push onto our stack um, eight, okay? And we're gonna test this first on the empty stack scenario, and then we'll test it on the non-empty stack scenario. So scenario one, okay, let's take a look at our steps here. Step one, create the new node, and then store its address in a variable we call n. Then the next step is we assign to the i variable in the node, our value v, which is in this case is eight. And then what do we do? We set the next to whatever top was pointing to. So let's say that this is our top variable and it was an empty stack. So we're just gonna take the contents of our top variable and copy it into our next in our new node. So now we have a situation that looks like that. And then finally in our fourth step, what do we do? we overwrite the contents of the top variable with the contents of our n variable. So when we do that, we're copying the contents of n into t. So that means that t is no longer pointing to null, it no longer contains null, it now contains the same memory address as our new node. So when that's done, you know our n here would be a local variable if this were say in a function, then the n goes away 
it doesn't exist anymore it goes out of scope so now we end up with our top pointer pointing to the top value on our stack so we went from an empty stack to a stack that's got eight right now let's take a look at the second scenario where we already have a value in our stack so four let's trace through our algorithm here and make sure it still works so we've got a picture that looks like this and so what do we do let's look at step one create a new node assign its memory address to n then what are we going to do we're going to assign a value to its i variable so let's say that um, in this scenario we did push t um, six okay so then we assign six to our new variable and then we have to assign to its next variable the node's next variable the contents of t so what's the contents of t it's the memory address of the existing node containing four so then this is going to point to that node right there and then what's our last step we overwrite the contents of t with the contents of n so instead of t pointing to the node containing four which was the top of the stack it now points to the node containing six algorithms done the n variable is now irrelevant so what do we have what's on top now tops pointing to six and then the six is pointing to four and then whatever four was pointing at okay so six is now on top of four so that is how your push algorithm works so let's take a look at the pop algorithm we're going to need to have the top pointer in scope because we're going to be modifying it so scenario one empty stack so what do we want to do here what do we need well you can't pop from an empty stack so the only time you're going to do something is if the stack is not empty so we saw how to test that already right so we're going to check to see if the top pointer is not null okay and if it is then we're going to do our popping so in the scenario here this if would evaluate to false so we would be done there's nothing there's nothing to do but let's check out this second scenario this is where it actually gets interesting and that's where we have a non empty stack say something like this yep so we got eight here we got six here so now our test would check the top pointer is it not equal to null yes because it's got the memory address of the of the top node in it so now we can continue on so what do we have to do okay well we have to change the top pointer so that it no longer points to eight because we're taking eight off the top of the stack we have to update it so that way it points to our new top which is going to be six right because if our stack looks like this right the top is currently eight but we got to change that to where it's going to be six so how are we going to do that well all we have to do is set top to top dot next okay now you might see a problem here if you can think about c plus plus for example um, if we leave it like this then we've got a memory leak because we lost the memory address of the first node in our list right if you're in java or python that doesn't matter because you have automatic garbage collection but in languages that don't have automatic garbage collection this would be a bug this isn't going to work so we're going to need to clean this up a bit so this is how we're going to clean it up okay what we're going to do is we're going to first create a temporary variable to hold on to that first node so we'll set n to t and then we can update our top pointer to the next node right the memory address of the next node is in the top nodes next variable so once we've preserved the memory address of the first node now we can update our top and we're fine and then we can finish off by deleting the top the formerly top node whose address is now in n so then that goes away n is no longer needed and so now our new top is 
the six. So it's just that easy. The pointer based um, stack is probably one of the easiest data structures, if not the easiest that you have. Now let's take a look at how many operations you actually have. In the worst case, where you actually have to remove a node, you've got one operation here, two operations here, three operations here, four operations here, which makes it big O of four in the worst case scenario, which is just constant time. And so we can rewrite it as big O of one for constant time. So now you know the basics of how to implement a pointer based or linked list based stack data structure in the language of your choice. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.